Yeah. It's further to the right. Is it? Okay. A little bit other right. Other right. <laughs> You're gonna get, come here, you dummy. What are you, a criminal in the making? Get out of there! I got 99 problems. And 11 of them are wrong. Hair sheep have been growing in popularity and for good reason. They're a fantastic addition to small farms, homesteads, and ranches alike. But what exactly is a hair sheep? And what makes them such a great choice? Hair sheep are different from traditional wool breeds. They're naturally parasite resistant, don't require shearing, and they're incredibly fertile. They have a high twinning rate and short gestation periods. But with all these advantages, they do come with one common challenge, especially in small flocks. And today we're gonna to discuss that challenge and show you our solution to that common problem. All right, here we are. Yes, we jumped on the sheep craze bandwagon. <laughs> I don't know why, but here we are. No, they have a lot of great benefits. Now, when you keep a small flock though, there's a lot of drawbacks to it because it's really hard to justify livestock guardian dog. The cost, the training, the barking. The biggest problem is keeping them safe from the coyotes that are around here. So really our solution to the problem was kind of similar to what our chickens were, right? Is there such thing as a sheep tractor? I don't know, but at any rate, you're gonna see what we did. Maybe you'll like it, maybe you'll love it, maybe you'll hate it, let us know. But at the end, we're gonna tell you if it works, if we like it, if it doesn't work, or if there's anything we change about it. Anyway, let's get to the build. Just gonna put it back up there, buddy. Can you give me a battery that's not dead? <laughs> oh, it's so dead. Thanks, doggy. All right, let's bolt up this corner, little buddy. And say put it right like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. below it. All right. Wait. Okay, bump it. Let's see. Yeah. Good man, yeah. These are for chain link because we couldn't find the right size ones and actually, well, we kind of could. They didn't have enough of them. And plus they were like two and a half times as much money. So we would have spent like a hundred dollars on just clamps, which is silly. So these are for chain link. And we just went over there and put them on the skid steer bucket and gave them some love taps with a three pound sledgehammer to open them up a little bit. And look at that, they fit like Perfect. Well, we're making this thing smaller. Yep, a little bit. Oh, for sure, for sure. Oh, God. Falling apart, we need to flip our hinge top. Okay, go ahead and snug that up. Oh, oh yes. Look what I got. This is the best part, honestly. Nah, maybe not the best, but it's really close to the best part. Being a content creator, people just send you the most awesome stuff. So, what you can see here, this is by ESAP. This is the Renegade Bolt. You see that little tiny guy? This thing is unbelievable. Oh yeah, my brand new Sentinel hood too. Um, this thing is unbelievable. So, this is a stick welder, right? Okay. So, as you can see, this funny thing underneath it, well, first, let me just show you here real quick. So, I'll show you the welder by itself. Here's my welder. This is a 200 amp stick welder, okay? What's this? Oh, oh, oh. This is like kind of where the magic happens, and there's this doesn't even end here. So, if you see here, this little compartment opens up. Four 12 amp hour DeWalt batteries right here go into this thing. Apparently it's the first welder of its kind. It actually is a truly cordless welder. I can take and plug this into 220 or 110. Also has this fancy little adapter here for 110. So you can plug it into a wall outlet for low amperage welding. And it's AC DC power. So you can just go ahead and take this guy and it sets right on top here. Locks in, has a clip in the back. Snaps in, throw your batteries in the side, boom, throw it over your shoulder, and I can just go anywhere on the ranch I want to and go weld something remotely. It's unbelievable. So, 
Um, yeah, pretty freaking excited about this. So we're actually gonna use this on this little project. So this pigtail on the back just plugs into the machine on top and boom. So the magic doesn't stop there. Actually, it also hybrid welds, meaning you get to plug it into 110 or 220 while it's also connected to the battery pack and it will draw off either either. So it's pretty wild. Um, I can't wait to use it. I haven't even used it yet. We just kind of got it out of the box and uh, we're sorting through all the good stuff. But I will say this, this is all like high dollar Tweco leads. This isn't some, this isn't some cheap junk. This isn't Home Depot stuff here. That's the real deal. All Tweco leads. And we have another surprise showing up here pretty soon, which happens to be the Rogue. Rogue? <laughs> it's the 285 multi-process welder. I am absolutely pumped. So ESAB has completely hooked us up with some amazing equipment. So it's going to be kind of funny. We're going to take and use this to weld a washer onto the half inch round stock. That'll be the first thing this ever welds. <laughs> it's almost embarrassing, but that's okay. We're gonna do it. Okay, Elliot already drilled a hole in this bad chicken. Yep. Sweet. There you go, drill. a little cotter pin. All this to weld one washer on. <laughs> we got a... Uh, one rod is 6013. I normally well with 7018, but we're gonna try the 6013, get this thing set up. This is all really nice stuff. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if I can just do this. I gotta take off these polarized glasses. I can't see anything with them. That is the smoothest arc. Wow. I didn't even feel like I was stick welding. That was weird. I can't wait to burn a bunch of rod. And ESAB sent me like a truckload of consumables and filler, unbelievable. So, uh, damn, that is, okay. I have to do more welding now. You're looking at this trailer like, ooh, all those cracks look yeah, mighty I'm fine. I'm gonna start welding some stuff, man. Let me put in holes in my awesome gate. Right. If I had my nail bags on, I wouldn't have to carry the guns between my legs. Fancy. Why do we put this on? Tell everybody why we put this on, Tristan. Because this is at the edge, it'd be like, Whoa! That and, and just the wind's gonna be grabbing the corner of this and it's gonna flop. Good hard wind. This is 29 gauge metal. Oh yeah. So yeah, this thing is not gonna be as light as anticipated originally, but that's okay. It should uh, hopefully not fall apart. Old snippers. Need some snippers? Yeah, snippers. Yeah, that's what Tristan just called nippers. Snippers. I think I'm about to strong. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Hi, Grandma, Grandpa. <laughs> Need some snippers? Snippers. Oh, snippers. Where are you, little? Come here. <laughs> snippers. <That's> stupid. <laughs> some conveyor belt that we had for a flat feeder we were gonna make and never got around to. So now I'm just splitting this. If you look at the back of there, you can see a big gap. And you know, when the winds come, if the winds are in the correct direction, it'll still let quite a bit of wind through there. And you know what, if I'm gonna be building a shelter, a mobile shelter, it might as well be as, you know, as uh, airtight as possible, at least, you know, when the wind comes up. So it's kind of pointless otherwise. No, that's great. My dogs bark at my own mom. They're dumb. Boom. There we go. We're going to screw that on the back. Okay, so Tristan's going to see if he can, like, actually split the difference here. Anyway, oh, I'm not even filming right. Okay, so we got this flap in here, and he's going to screw the heck out of it, and then it'll just flip out the outside as we drag it, and that makes the seal. All right, go for it. Yeah, do it. Is that, is that good enough? I know oh, you're judging. Oh, it's further to the right. Is it? 
okay. little bit other right. Other right. <laughs> other right. Keep going. One more. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Oh, too funny. Okay, I like it. I've kind of been farting with this thing now for a few days. Can't seem to uh, just work on it and stay on it. We're letting it ever evolve. You know, we weren't exactly sure how we wanted to build it, but pretty happy with the way it's going now. So we're just wire tying all these hog panels on. So, uh, you know, critters with sharp teeth can't get through to the critters. And it'll keep them in, especially like lambs when they're pretty small, you know, they'll eventually poke out. We figure we should be able to overnight, you know, 20 head, something like that in here. And eventually, eventually, we're gonna just add those two panels there out the front here and then relocate the gate as the flock increases in size so we can overnight more animals in it. You know, a lot of folks say, oh, get a livestock guardian dog and all that. And that's good and great. Except for that's just not going to work too well for us. The way we're set up and we already have plenty of dogs and keeping them separated. And I don't want to listen to a, a livestock guardian dog parking all night. Eh. I think it's done. We got it all tied up, wired on. We got a rope on here. This is just some hollow core uh, poly rope. It's got like a 300 pound working load. So we'll see. We're going to take and tow this with the skid, uh, skid steer, <laughs> the four wheeler, and see how it does. So this will be its maiden voyage. You're so tight. I'll never come back again. Be all. Floppy cat. Oh, you're gonna get. Come here, you dummy. Come here. You like being in jail? What are you, a criminal in the making? Get out of there. All right. Cats, we got lots. We got like 11 of these things around here. Sorry, right, you want cats? Oh my god. <laughs> I got 99 problems. And 11 of them are those things. Let's see if this rope breaks. I'm gonna hook it up really high here. So it gives us more of an upward pull. See if I don't tear my uh, my rack off here. Gonna see if the Honda comes through for us. Okay, so ideally we're gonna to wanna to have a better upward angle so it puts more lift on this, but that's okay. That'll be awesome, we'll crap all over it. Okay, here we go. Come on. I speak sheep. You see that? Oh. Ah, come on. There you go. What's that? Oh yeah, some more crap. Come on. He's that yellow rope in his life. Oh no, I know, that's fine. They're pretty quick, you're gonna wanna go in with yourself. They got the food.
Okay. Okay, here we are about two weeks later and so far so good. I'm gonna show you my favorite things about it and I'm gonna show you the things I don't necessarily like about it that'll be an easy change. Let's go check it out. Hey, you troublemakers. All right, let's look at this first thing and really the only thing that I would change about it. So it's right here. I like this gap, okay? Now, yes, if you have a mountain lion or a bear, they're gonna still get into this thing. That's not what this is for. This is to prevent coyotes. So this gap right here, I like, because in the summer, it's gonna need some room to breathe and get this convective heat that's gonna be coming off of this roof here out. But I think I need to add like a one by four, a one by three something, screwed on to the top of this metal in case an animal puts its head over it. This metal could injure them. Other than that, I think everything else about it is pretty much a win. Now, I'm gonna show you probably one of my favorite features that we put on this and how well it has been working. Right here, the rubber flap that you saw us install earlier in the video, and you can see down here in the corner that that panel is held up three and a half inches higher than the rest, basically the width of one two by four. So it allows us a higher ground clearance when dragging this to a new area, so it doesn't, it's not as prone to hanging up on a high spot. And it also gives us a really nice weather tight seal the wind doesn't blow underneath there, and the sheep can stay a lot warmer in the winter months with the driving wind. So at the end, all in all, I think it's a win. For us, it was very affordable. It was less than $200 in total materials because we already had them. These are some repurposed gates from our land, and we already had the, we already had the hog panel. We had the metal roof. We had the lumber. All I ended up purchasing was some fasteners, a little bit of wire, and that rope right there. So all in all, it was very, very affordable for us. Maybe you can find some of this stuff secondhand somewhere, marketplace, whatever. But it's some food for thought and might help you along on some of your future projects. So thanks from the ranch here. And if you haven't already, like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you sometime next week right here on the ranch.